Hey, what's going on guys? I'm Alex from Simple Mods. Welcome back to another video. Now I have a pretty exciting new motherboard here with me and that is the Asus Maximus 9 Extreme. Let's check it out. All right guys, first things first, let's see what comes included in the box. Now, of course, as soon as you open it up, the motherboard will be right there. So we'll take this out, put it aside, we'll check, out, check this out later in the video. I just first wanna have a look at all of the accessories that actually come included. So the first thing that you will see here is a sheet of stickers. Asus do include these with all the other ROG Z270 motherboards. So that's a pretty cool thing. And let's get the accessories box out as there's quite a few things in here to go through. There's a pretty heavy accessories box. I'm pretty sure I can guess why. So the Maximus 9 Extreme mono block that comes included is here. So this doesn't come pre-installed on the motherboard. I mean, of course you have to get your CPU in there first before you can install this. So there's actually a few parts to this water block. So that's the main water block itself there. You also get another heatsink that mounts to it. So this is for the M.2 slot that will be just underneath the CPU socket. So you do get cooling for that as well. And then you will have your back plate here with all of the screws. They do include some thermal pads as well. Everything you need to install the mono block. So let me put this aside. I will actually show you in this video how to install this mono block as well. Now, moving on, you do get an RGB extender cable. So this is for RGB LED strips. So you can connect that to the motherboard and then that's just an extender cable. Now I do get a nice, uh, pretty cool ROG badge. So this is a hard badge, so you can put this on your case or something. You get an ROG coaster as well. These seem to be the screws for all of the 3D mounting points on the motherboard. You get some temperature sensors as well. So there seems to be three of them in there. Of course you get your Nvidia HB SLI bridge as well. And that is a hard bridge, so that's definitely nice. Seem to be some screws in here. I'm not exactly sure what these ones are for. There seem to be some screws here just for your uh, M.2 mounts. Um, this is also from the water block. So these are the screws to mount the M.2 plate. You get a CPU installation tool as well. So ASUS seem to include this tool with all of their motherboards. Now, if you are buying this motherboard, I'm pretty sure you would know how to install a CPU. And also you get a front panel um, connector. So this is for your front panel connectors. So you can actually connect everything outside of the case and then you can just plug this in in one go. So it'd be much easier. You also get a fan extender PCB. So this is a fan extension card that is included. So the motherboard already has quite a few um, fan headers on it, but if you do need more, then you do get this card included. You get some further stickers. So these are um, just ROG cable labels. So you can color code all of your cables um, inside of your case. That's a pretty cool thing. Um, let's get this out. So this is the Maximus 9 Extreme user guide. So you'll find all the information you need about the motherboard in there. Now they do also include, of course, the 20% off cable mod cables. Now I will leave the code in the video for whoever wants to grab that. Just another piece of information here. So this seems to be the fan extender card installation guide. Um, just here you get the Wi-Fi antenna. And then just underneath here should be a few more cables. Uh, this is a pretty cool thing. So in here you actually get a ROG branded uh, little USB stick. It will have all of your drivers and everything on there. Now this is something pretty cool. You might actually be able to use that uh, after you have your, all your, your builds set up. So that's a pretty cool um, ROG branded uh, USB stick. Now uh, this is just a cable from the fan extender card. And you get some SATA cables. So there's four bags. There's two in each bag. So one has a uh, straight uh, connector on both ends. And then there's one with a straight and a 90 connector in there as well. So you get uh, eight of those in total. So that's pretty good. And that's pretty much it in terms of the things that come inside the box. So let's check out the motherboard. All right, guys, so here it is, the Asus Maximus 9 Extreme motherboard. Now, as you can see, the motherboard is pretty bare to begin with. And that is because the mono block is not actually installed on the motherboard. So you will actually see in this area here that there are no heat sinks for the VRMs or anything like that. So that does actually mean that you will not be able to use this motherboard without water cooling. So if you are looking at buying this motherboard, then that's maybe a good thing that you should consider first. You will have to water cool this motherboard in order to be able to use it. Now the motherboard is of EATX size, so it is a bit wider than other normal ATX motherboards. So that is another thing that you should consider before buying this, making sure that your case will support EATX motherboards. They are just a little bit wider, so I know some case will not uh, be able to fit that, 
or they will fit it but they will cover a little bit of your cable grommets on the side of the motherboard so that's a good thing to keep in mind so in terms of the design for this motherboard same as all the other new rog maximus 9 motherboards asus have gone with a pretty neutral color so the motherboard is pretty much black all over and they are using different rgb features for you to sort of theme and color this motherboard as you want to match your build now just this area here where the maximus 9 logo is that area will light up rgb and I believe it will shine a bit of light from underneath here as well. And then the RG logo on the heatsink will light up RGB as well. And then you have the connector on the PCIe, the first slot and the second slot that will light up RGB as well. And then of course you do have your RGB headers. So there is one RGB header here, and then there's another RGB header at the bottom. And you have to be mindful with the RGB header at the top. This one will actually be used by the monoblock. The monoblock does have integrated RGB lighting and it will use this RGB header here. So you will only have technically access to one to connect any RGB LED strips that you might want. So the Asus Maximus 9 Extreme is on the Z270 chipset. It does support both 6th and 7th gen Intel Core CPUs, and that's Skylake and the new Kaby Lake as well. Now in terms of PCIe slots, you will get one, two, three PCIe 16X slots. Now the first one is wired at 16x, the second one is wired at 8x, and then the last one is wired at 4x only. What that means is that this motherboard will support two-way SLI, and then it will actually support three-way crossfire cards as well. When it is running in two-way SLI, the top and the second slot will run at 8x each. Also another thing you will notice about the first and second slot is that they both have the reinforcing around them, so that will give your graphics card a bit more stability when it's plugged in there. In terms of memory support, of course, you do get the dual channel memory, and uh, actually they have put some reinforcing just in the middle there as well on the memory slots. Now the motherboard does support 64 gigs of DDR4 RAM up to speeds of 4133 megahertz. In terms of M.2 slots, you will get two. So there is one here that takes drives up to 80 millimeters in length. And there's another one just underneath this cover here. So you will have to take these three screws out. So there's one, two, three here. It doesn't actually affect the heatsink. It just takes off the cover and then you can put an M.2 drive just underneath there up to 110 millimeters in length. In terms of the bandwidth allocation for the M.2 drives, and this is all according to the information that I have from Asus, I haven't had any time to test this motherboard personally while having it in. I do actually have to give it back fairly soon. I will get it back in later. I will do a custom build with this. I'll do further testing as well if you guys are interested to see. Now, in terms of the information that I have from Asus in regards to the M.2 slots, so the top slot here does actually support PCIe Gen 3 as well as SATA drives. However, when it is using drives in SATA mode, it will share bandwidth with the SATA slots 1 and 2, which are just the very first SATA slots here. And the one at the bottom, the M.2 drive at the bottom, does not actually support SATA mode, just the drives in PCIe Gen 3. So what I want to go over now is just all of the connectors. So I'll start from the top, we'll go around on the edge, I'll cover all the connectors that are included with the motherboard. So of course it is an overclocking oriented motherboard, you will get an extra 4 pin for power for your CPU along with the normal included 8 pin. You will get a sensor for the water block. So the water block does have a flow sensor built in and you will have a cable that's already on the water block that will connect to this connector here. Right next to that is an RGB header. This one, as I said before, will actually be populated by the RGB strip that is inside the mono block. Just around here, you will have some radiator fans. So all these are labeled radiator fans and they're all four pins, so there's four of them there. Now, just below that, you will have the Q code readout. So that will read out uh, all of your codes in regards to the motherboard so you can figure out any errors or anything like that. Just below that, you will have some overlocking features. Now there is a retry button as well as a safe boot button. There is uh, your memo K button. Just below that, you will have your 24 pin, and it is actually a 24 pin that has been turned around 90 degrees. So the cable will plug in from the side here. And I'm not actually sure if I like this at the moment. Again, I've not used this motherboard yet, but I do like when I have a nice custom 24 pin, when it comes out from the back of the case, plugs into the motherboard, it does have that nice bow whenever the 24 pin is upright. So I do actually like the bow that the 24 pin forms whenever you have a custom cable in there. It's a really good way of uh, showing it off like that. Just below that, there is your USB 3.1 front panel header. There's still not that many cases that come with this header. I know there are some from Inwin, some from Fantex as well. Um, just below that, there is a chassis fan. You have, again, a 90 degree turned USB 3.0 front panel header. Then you have all of your SATA ports. And then moving along to the bottom of the case, you'll find more radiator fan headers. So there's four more here with the four at the top. Again, this definitely shows that this is a water cooling oriented motherboard with only one chassis fan connector here and another one over here. Now just next to that, you actually do have two K2 
connectors for water cooling pumps. So these will support full water cooling pumps. So they will have enough power to drive your DDC pumps or anything like that. And just next to that, there is actually a flow sensor. So you do get another flow sensor here. There is the other one that's already built into the mono block. And then just, just next to that, there are two temperature sensors for your water cooling loop. One will be able to measure the temperature going into a water block. The other will be able to measure the temperature coming out. So I know there are some people that actually do like to know, for example, the temperature of the coolant going in and then the temperature of the coolant going out of a component such as a CPU or water blocks. So that's definitely a cool thing to have. You have your other RGB header there and then all of your other front panel connectors and all that. And then just on the side here, you will have the Supreme FX. Um, I'm not sure if this area lights up, but that's the Supreme FX audio that is included with the motherboard. Now that's it in terms of our quick overview at this motherboard. I'm just gonna quickly turn it around and give you guys a look at the rear IO as well. Okay right, guys, there it is. I do have the motherboard turned on inside just to give you guys a quick look at the rear IO, all of the connectors. And you may have noticed before when we were taking a look at the accessories inside the box that there was no IO shield included. And that's because it already has it integrated on the motherboard itself, similar to the Maximus 9 Formula motherboard, as well as the Rampage 5 Edition 10 from ASUS. Now, starting from the left-hand side, you will see the clear CMOS button there, and there is actually a BIOS flashback button as well. Now with the BIOS flashback button, you can actually plug a USB that includes the BIOS file in here. You don't even actually have to have a CPU installed or anything like that. You just uh, give power to the motherboard, press that button, make sure that the USB is in here. You will see that this USB is highlighted with the BIOS. That means that this USB will work with the BIOS flashback button and that will allow you to flash your BIOS without even having to have a CPU installed in the motherboard. So that's definitely a cool feature. Now you will have uh, your Wi-Fi connectors here. So the motherboard does include Wi-Fi and you did see the antenna included on the box before. There is a full size display port, HDMI port, USB type C. So that is a 3.1 type C um, gen two port as well as a type A 3.1 port as well. And then you will have four USB 3.0 ports, two more here as well, and then a one gigabit ethernet port and then you will have all of the audio connectors as well. Now, the cool thing about the rear IO connectors for the audio is that, as you can see, they are not color coded. And that is because when you turn it on, they do actually have a color coded LED on the inside. So that's a pretty cool feature. When you actually have this motherboard plugged in, you will actually be able to see the color coded LEDs around the audio ports. So that's pretty much it in terms of our look at this board. Now I will actually show you guys how to install that water block. So let's check it out. Okay guys, so I have all of the necessary components to install the water block laid out on the table. So you can see the water block here. This is the M.2 cover, all of the screws here, all of the included thermal pads as well. And you also get some washers to protect the motherboard when you're installing the screws. And then this will be the back plate that goes on the back. So what I'm gonna be doing now is just um, installing this water block and sort of walking you guys step by step at what you do to install the water block. Okay now, so the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is turn the water block upside down. Now if you are worried about getting any fingerprints on it, just give it a quick wipe. So it's uh, not really an issue. So the first thing uh, that you wanna do is install all of the thermal pads on the water block itself. Now these do come pre-cut. So the first thing you wanna do is just make sure you take the peeling off of it. So that it does have one on either side. So what you would do, you would take off one side first, it does tell you which side up. So you can see by the little sticker there, also tells you to make sure to remove it and you, will, you do wanna have it with that side up as um, the other side is more sticky. It'll make sure it'll stick onto the water block when you are turning it upside down to install over your um, CPU socket. Okay, so as you can see, all of the thermal pads are on now. The next thing you are gonna to wanna to do before you install the water block is you're gonna make sure you take off all the peelings off. So there's one over the CPU area, as you can see, and then also all of the ones on the thermal pads themselves. Now, because I'm not actually going to be using this motherboard and the water block at the moment, I'm only installing it for the purpose of this video. I will actually leave all of the protective covers on the thermal pads and on the CPU area, but do make sure that you remove all those when you are actually installing it yourself. Now, at this point, you're gonna to wanna to install the CPU in your socket. Now the next step where you install the mono block on the socket is to get all these washers off of this pad. So there are quite a few of them and then you have to install these over all of the mounting holes in order to protect the motherboard from the mono block when it makes contact when the motherboard is turned on. Now there are four holes around the socket that you will need to cover and then there's four more around the outside. These will all be highlighted for you in the user manual for the motherboard. Now for the purpose of this video, I'm not going to be installing these pads. Like I said, I'm not going to be using this motherboard. I'm also not going to be putting any thermal pad over the CPU, so make sure you do that as well. And then once that's done, then you're ready to install the mono block. Now the mono block, you're going to want to have it with this side up. And then what you have to do to install it is just actually slide it in through there. It'll sort of line up with all of the mounting holes. 
Once you have it on there, you will have to turn the motherboard around and then you'll see all the mounting holes on the other side. So what I've actually done now is turn the motherboard around and I do have it hanging off the edge of the box just because the water block does actually sit a little bit lower than the rear IO cover. That way it ensures that the mono block sits flush with the motherboard and makes contact with everything. So what you're gonna to want to be doing now is installing the plate on the back. Just goes over like that. It does have a rubber grommet already on the other side. Now you do have the four screws that go around the socket. So I'm just going to install these first So at this point, the monoblock is already pretty secure on the CPU socket. Now there are just four more holes on the outside of the socket that you will need to install the screws with the springs on. Now again, guys, all of this information will actually be included with the user manual of this motherboard. So you will have all of the instructions needed in there as to how to properly install the monoblock. Make sure they're all tight and you're good to go. So you can turn around the other side. And there you have it. So the next step is to plug in the two cables. So there is one for the RGB LEDs inside the monoblock and another one for the flow sensor. So I'm just going to be tucking them nicely just around on the edge of the monoblock just behind the 8 pin power cable and then plugging them both in. Now what you're going to have to ensure is that you plug in the RGB connector in the right way. And there you have it tucked away nicely. All right, now the final step is just to install the M.2 cover panel. Now, before you do that, again, I'm not going to be doing it uh, just for the purpose of this video, I'm just showing you. There is another M.2 pad and it is a highlighted square just underneath the mono block there where you will have to stick that in. Once that's done, you can position the M.2 cover over the mounting holes. Yeah, now you're gonna to wanna to do that even if you don't have an M.2 installed underneath there. And that's just to complete the look of the mono block itself. So there you have it guys, the monoblock is installed on the ASUS Maximus 9 Extreme motherboard. Now that definitely completes the look of this motherboard and I do have to say it looks absolutely awesome. And that's pretty much it in terms of this video. Now one thing I didn't mention before about the monoblock is a lot of people have said that it does look like a cassette player and I do have to agree it does look like a cassette player just around the inlet and outlet there. So actually what the ring is just around that area there with the sensor that it has inside of it in case there's a leak around the CPU area and if there is a drop of coolant while the system is turned on and it does actually touch that ring around the system will actually turn off it will detect the leak it will turn off and it will protect all of your components and everything else in case there is a leak so that's pretty much it um, in terms of those rings around there so they do have their purpose it doesn't they're not there just to make it look like a cassette player or something like that yeah, anyways guys uh, that's pretty much it for this video i hope you enjoyed getting a good look at this motherboard seeing everything that comes inside the box as well as seeing how the mono block is installed so if you guys enjoyed this video then hit that like button check out my other videos subscribe if you enjoy my content and i'll see you in the next one